Nick. Yes, Max. How delightful to have you here. Uh, I wanted so much to have a chat with you, especially a week or so, after what to all of us as a very successful fintech program. Congratulations for bringing everyone into town and showing us the possibilities out there. But I wanted to start with uh, just hearing from you, what do you think we achieved at the forum? Thank you for having me, Max. It's, it's a pleasure to be in your beautiful gardens. But most importantly, thank you for partnership, for believing in the story of KFC and uh, coming in always as a strategic partner from the time when we were prepared we approached you to support us to develop the sustainable finance roadmap to now the inclusive fintech forum to measure success we need to first ask what were we trying to solve we believe that society has got different challenges Specifically, when it comes to the financial sector, there are issues around inclusivity. There are issues around ensuring that finance is serving everyone in a sustainable way. Now, we don't pretend to have all the answers. And that's why we felt that acting as a convener, identifying like-minded people, and we convene them to have a dialogue. This dialogue could come up with solutions, with advice on how we can address those two society issues inclusiveness and sustainability and we believe that fintech is one of the means to how we can address those two issues so what has come out of it is that it was successful from the ability to convene because we had close to three three thousand delegates with more than 150 speakers to discuss on these topical issues around inclusivity, around sustainability of finance while using fintech. Two, from the perspective of Chigali International Financial Center, we made business. We were able to register businesses that are now domiciled under Chigali International Financial Center. We had strategic partnerships that we signed as an institution Again, with those that are of, of like mind, in this case, Urban, who bring together angel investors, and we believe angel investing is one of the emerging trends for providing alternative funding to startups in Africa. So largely, when we look back, we feel this was a very successful event, and we are looking now 2024. Well done. And it was indeed very, very successful from the perspectives that you have given, but also many other perspectives. I want to pick up on a few issues that uh, you raised there. Sometimes when we talk about the world of finance, to many people it can appear very disengaged and very far because they don't quite feel it in their day-to-day -day life. For us as UNDP, we were interested in partnering with you, not only because we believe in your vision, but also we believe fundamentally that if we are to achieve inclusion, we've got to start looking at our financial systems and how they are enabling or disabling other people from participating as active economic agents in our society. So one thing that is, there were three issues that arose for me and I, I would like you to reflect a little bit more on them. Uh, 
for us. As a continent, as a country, we've got to be able to generate our own resources, sources of financing, to be able to finance our own development. And I'm wondering from where you sit, do you see this as a possibility at all for Rwanda and for Africa? And if so, how can we do it? So that's solving the problem at a macro level. What can we do? Taking that a little level lower, what can we do for the last mile to solve the liquidity challenges that the farmer in Kireye might be facing right now? To solve the liquidity challenges that the person who's driving a motor on Kigali's roads and want to replace their motor, what can they do to raise the liquidity that's needed for them to make those investments. I couldn't agree with you more. Cash is the lifeblood of everything, be it from a business perspective, be it at an individual or family level. Cash is king. Now, there are three issues from my perspective but also based on what the conversations that emerged at the forum that we need to work on. One, to create financial literacy. And financial literacy from the perspective of all of us appreciating that concept, that cash or liquidity, is paramount. Two is the other pillar that I look at as we talk about liquidity is saving. Using the lending among friends, you are able to do so because you have balance. After meeting your own needs, you are able to say, yes, I can pack this and be able to lend so and so this amount. So saving becomes critical because money is not like mana where there is something falling out of the sky. So how to create that wealth is the discipline to say for what I'm making, I'm able to put some on the side for unforeseen circumstances. And now when we begin to pool these resources are what will enable us lend. So it will enable us do other developmental activities that we want to do. So as a society, as Africans, Again, that's something that we need to work on. When you look statistically in Rwanda and in other African countries, savings is not a culture that we have. So when we're also looking at sources of funding of other activities, we need to realize that saving plays a very, very critical role. Because it's what gives us that multiplicity that we need. How do we create more value on the basis of, on the back of the savings that we are seeing in thousands of people across this country, but across this continent, who are involved in savings plans. I think, you know, we have more than 90,000 of them, or more than 100,000, just in Rwanda alone, uh, savings plans. How do we create more value so we unlock more liquidity for people who are engaged in those savings clubs. And that's where technology plays a critical role. Because once there is the appreciation that's in numbers, then you get something tangible. Because like you rightly put it, at the last mile, what you are considering small, which is indeed small, but when you bundle it together, it becomes something tangible. 
Now that's where we need to look at how we leverage technology to ensure that we now address the costs and the platform to provide to this collective, to these beginners that are emerging and also need to be able to share successes. I feel that's one, one of the things where we don't do well, showcasing successful case studies to use them as inspiration for even others to emerge. Like, to your point, when we look at uh, most commercial real estate in Chigali, most of them have come up as a result of a group of people joining effort together, chick, mig. When you look at them individually, they will not have had the capacity to develop a 20 billion property. But when they come together as people who have been tenants, renting shops, who have now saved, used their savings, and went on the financial market to borrow, they're able to undertake a massive project. So how do we replicate that? I feel, one, we need to document it, showcase how it's been successful, use it to motivate others, to create inspirations for them. So, Max, I believe, yes, there is the ability of people working collectively. We need to find technology that is able to give them platforms in a cost-effective manner so that they're able to multiply what they are doing. And we have cases, successful cases of it.